In 1961, the president of the time gave instructions to manufacture an indigenous car. A time target limit is also set, 29 October of the same year. Now, there is a ruined factory, 23 engineers and 129 days. The opposition groups trying to impose a desperation by saying Turks can't make cars. It's really difficult to understand why they have stand for such an opposition. For whom and for what reason? Another interesting point is that the Chamber of Mechanical Engineers leads the opposition, a non-governmental organization of Turkey, not France or Germany. Chamber of Mechanical Engineers of Turkey. Here it is. Listen with your own ears from one of the revolution car engineers. Makine Mühendisleri Odası tam tersi karşı görüş alarak yani karşı bir tavır alarak ve bu projeye karşı durdu. Yani Türkiye'de otomotiv üretimine karşı durdu. Anyway, despite all the difficult conditions, the engineers produce all parts engine block and its components, hood, interior design details and etc. With this car manufactured in Turkey, they succeeded the first indigenous car Devrim to be delivered on 29 October. By the way, the Turks manufactured such a car that could compete with the equivalent brands of the time. Both its design, engine and road performance features at the contemporary technology level and even better for some parts. The two Devrim cars were brought to Ankara by train from the factory to pick up President Jamal Gürsel from the Grand National Assembly of Turkey to take him to the ceremony. By the way, only a few liters of gas are placed in the tanks of the cars due to the safety rules on the railway transportation. The gas load to the vehicles would have made from the mobile gas station in Sihye in Ankara and then taken to the parliament to pick up the president. The rim car set off with the escort of a crowded traffic crew with motorcycles. But since the driver were unaware of the limited gas in the tank, they continue on their way without stopping at the gas station. Anyway, the president get on the car. The driver turned the key, but the car did not start. Everyone get shocked. It was realized that there is no gas left in the tank. When it is said the car ran out of gas, the president said, you made a car with the western logic, but you forgot to gas supply with the eastern mind. As a matter of fact, the president went to the ceremony with the other white Devrim car and attended the ceremonies despite all kinds of disruptions. However, the next day, the newspapers carried the Devrim car to its headlines as Turkey's car did not work. And this case recorded in the page of the history as the car manufactured by Turks did not start. Until a film producer who was concerned about this issue made a film on the subject and the facts were revealed. After 60 years passed, a move was made to catch the age again. Similar to the mentality that made the headline is trying to rule out Turkey's efforts to catch the era. Of course, they can't say that Turkey cannot manufacture this time anymore. You wonder why? Because there is a visibly developed automobile industry in Turkey. So, if they deny, it's obvious to see the cities of Bursa, Kocaeli, Sakarya, dozens of industrial zones, thousands of large and small factories manufacture parts for the automobile industry. From headlight to air conditioner, thousands of products are being manufactured by the Turkey's industry. And they don't just manufacture for Turkey. In the all cars manufactured in the world, at least one part is manufactured in Turkey's industry. Let me give you an extreme example. There is Tesla, you know, the world's famous electric car. Belongs to Elon Musk. So, Turkey's automobile industry even manufacture parts for Tesla. I wonder with which argument are they trying to use this time? They were like, everything from its design to its parts is imported. It is not an indigenous car. <sighs> Never get bored, keep explaining the throughout these friends. Let's explain with an example to make it clear. Fiat, Ford, Toyota, Hyundai, 
All of them are being manufactured in Turkey, right? From the steering wheel to the headlight, many parts are being manufactured in Turkey. Now, I wonder if there are columnists in the country of these brands, let's say in Japan for Toyota, criticize the government for letting Toyota to manufacture in Turkey. Or do they make any acquisitions that these cars are manufactured in Turkey, so the brand belongs to the Turks? Come on, no! Let me give another example if that is not enough. If you have an iPhone or someone near you, turn it and look backside. It says designed in the USA and made in China. It actually says it's assembled in China, but the whole world knows that iPhones are manufactured in China from the screen to the case. But the intellectual property belongs to the US company. So tell me. Which country does the iPhone belong to? The billions of dollars of turnover belong to China or the USA? Of course, it also benefits China because they produce and assemble so many parts of the iPhone. But the lion's share goes to the US, the US company. If China earns an average of $50 per phone, the US earns $950. Now, let's come to our indigenous electric car. The investment belongs to us, right? Yes. Here is the five brave men. Intellectual property belongs to us, right? Yes. Parts will be produced in Turkey. The assembly will be in Turkey. Is it true? That's also true. But the haters may convene you from this point. Watch out. They say the car is indigenous, but all the parts will be imported. Nope, this is not true. Not all parts will be imported. Approximately 51% of the electric car will be indigenous. Moreover, this rate will increase to 68 following 3 years. Let's assume 51%. Let's initially consider 51% is indigenous. What about remaining 49% of the car? Now, listen carefully here. The top management is progressing so professionally. They set up an agreement with the foreign companies to produce parts which cannot be produced by the local industry. The management says them, come to Turkey and set up your factory here. I'll be your partner too. Let's produce together. So now, let's summarize. Investment made by Turkey, investor Turkish companies, intellectual property is national, Parts will be produced within the country. Assembly will be indigenously. How was the situation on iPhone? Intellectual property owned by the US. 100% production and 100% of assembly is realized by China. In indigenous car, intellectual property owned by Turkey. 68% of production and 100% of assembly will be realized by Turkey. Can you see the picture? We saw almost everything within the country indigenous. For God's sake, I really wonder if a columnist in the US says this iPhone is China's property, not United States, because most of the executives are either Indian or Chinese. If you ask about production, it's already made in China. Probably no one will care. Or the columnist makes everyone laugh at himself. The trend shows that this time the good ones will win not the bad ones. It won't be an automobile industry story that ends up with frustration for the next generation. It will be the story of tech move that is started with pride.